Hello there, I'm Nick Williams and if you've been watching my channel you'll be aware of a 89 key Gavioli in the last few months. It's a recent acquisition as of 2021 and I was asked a question yesterday if I could give a bit of a walk around of the organ and show you in more detail. This is a drawbar trailer, weighs about 7 tonnes all in with the organ and some of the music. I've not yet got anything to tow this. I am saving up for a heritage commercial such as a Scammel or contemplating actually taking this box off the drawbar chassis and fitting it onto a rigid lorry. Uh, any donations or suggestions, most welcome. I want to find a economic way to be able to get this to steam fairs and shows and even private events like weddings so it can bring in a little bit of income to start to pay for its future maintenance and ensure more people can see and enjoy this magnificent machine. So without further ado, it was built in 1905. The Gavioli company is synonymous with fairground organs. The actual company that patented the system of using this perforated cardboard, uh, which was effectively stolen from the Jacquard loom idea. Uh, although a Jacquard loom has a, a page of information that deals with the intricate weave and then it moves to the next page of information to do the next weave and uh, you can get lots of complicated patterns that way obviously this is a precursor to the digital age because where there's a hole that represents a one so it's a binary system in that respect you're actually able to have a tune that plays continuously so unlike the jacquard it's it's, it's moving along this axis and, and playing so this is the reading device it's called a keyframe mostly because it's a frame with lots of little keys. Now there's 89 of these keys on this organ, hence you'll see it referred to as an 89 key. You may see the term keyless used uh, on other organs, that's where it doesn't use keys to read the music but it uses holes and pneumatics, just the air escaping to trigger the mechanism. But this is the original idea as patented by Gavioli in 1892 actually for uh, reading holes in cardboard and the keyed system is thought to be the best on the basis that it is the most robust. It's more complicated because inside this frame, I suppose I should have taken the top off really, but all these keys are pivoted back and there's a series of little actions underneath and this device is supplied with air and basically when a key rises it opens a valve to send more air down the corresponding tube. If you imagine that when I cover all the keys and press this down there's no air coming out of any of the 89 tubes. The moment a hole appears and, and one of these keys rises for the duration that it's up it sends air down a little tube. We can see some of those signal tubes here and this comes onto this massive wind chest. In fact, I'm going to take this off, start to see some inside mechanism here. A leather action there, so the air coming in expands that little leather pouch, pushes this valve down, which magnifies the air, and that sends more air to the rest of the organ to either play pipes or, in some cases, to move yet more valves, which then, through a third action, play the pipes. If we had air coming in, we'd be getting signals corresponding to where these notes are in air coming out the signal tubes to play the action. So from there, uh, we've missed the vital step actually, which is where does the wind come from to start with? Well, this is a massive electric blower here and it's a two-stage unit. So there's a fan here and another fan there in order to get the pressure. Works at about eight inches water gauge that is if you had a column of water it would be displaced by about eight inches or 200 mil from the pressure of the air uh, now originally this organ would have had bellows to make the wind which are known as feeders or french feeders and there would be a crank which would have pushed the bellows up and down and then that wind was fed into a reservoir to store the wind at a constant pressure the reservoir is still here the air comes in and is then distributed to the rest of the organ uh, from there. People wrongly call these steam organs. It's a term that will annoy anyone into mechanical music. I don't know whether they think that steam is going to be coming through the pipes. These organs were nearly always electrically driven. Uh, the only exception is where one would have a steam engine, such as on a, a gallopers or other fairground ride, which would then have driven the bellows. So at no point was steam used there after. 
and more often than not electric motor would drive the organ and you'd have a showman's engine generating for electricity so although the motive power initially is coming from steam it's nothing to do with the organ at all they're called fairground organs in america they're called band organs we've got another really clever element of these bigger fairground organs and that is a register control so this is the register box on this organ and you can see some names down at the bottom there we've got clarinets violins forte and what this enables is different sections of the instrument can be brought in and out of play this is a cancel key so by doing that we can turn all the registers off and when this is set in the music that will only play a clarinet mixture for the notes given the moment you then start adding these in or the organ starts adding these in and that might be the forte as i play the organ you'll see it's, it's quite magic people get confused the fact that this organ actually has 400 pipes and they say but there aren't 400 notes so it's all about having different sections this is the 89 key scale it's a common scale it's actually derived from the 87 key scale which then became the 89 key there was a number one two three and four merengue then started the violin baritone scale which is known as vb which is probably the most common scale in England. Merengue is the rival to Gavioli. He did actually work for Gavioli and left in 1902, set up his own organ building company also in Paris. So it's quite unusual this organ in the UK to still be playing on the correct original number four scale. A feature of this, as you'll see, is the melody section, which has got this massive compass of notes here, is subdivided into clarinets for the lower part, piccolos for the higher part, but we've got a violin which covers an extra five piccolo notes. So when the violins come in, it's got a larger compass. And that's quite critical in arranging because it means you can do some very clever things. We've also got a counter melody section here. And this organ is also unusual in having a rank called Court Anglais, English horn, original gavioli pipes. They're just very rare to still be used, really. Uh, there's not many instruments with those on. We've also got percussion, which is put in automatically here. We've got a snare drum here and here and B is the bandmaster. It's quite unusual. There's a whole note in this music scale just for the button on the bandmaster, just so he can wave his stick around in time with the music. Most organs use the bass drum signal, but of course that doesn't work when quiet parts of the music are on and the bass drum isn't playing. Another interesting feature, just sidestepping, this became a bit of a standard amongst organ builders. This is a Liminaire book from 1906 and the Liminaires were actually 86 key, they didn't have registration, but they had an extra note just for the bell ringer figures. Uh, it's been filled in now on this one. Like a lot of the old music with this organ is still ready to go and still in use and still works. Uh, people often ask, of course, can you get new music? Yes, I've got pieces up here from Adele and some of the other latest hits. I've also got lots of classical pieces which would certainly predate the build date of the organ but perhaps have been done in recent times and uh, the 1920s were a particular golden era for music a lot of 20s hits you imagine we've just had the first world war and uh, the 20s come along and everybody wants to be put in a good mood there were some really lovely musical compositions and they lend themselves to these type of mechanical music instruments anyway could do a bit of a walk around to the organ we've got some bass helpers here these are saxophone pipes uh, we've got two ranks of trombones on this organ. We've got wooden trombones and brass trombones. The brass come in with the forte register, just to add strength to that. The melody violins, there's three ranks on the front, and there's also this chest here with another two ranks at the back to strengthen it. They're two different scales. In terms of the way the pipes make the noise, it's just about having a variety in overtones that give colour and timbre to each note. This is the forte chest, so when the forte is in play, this for the main lower melody rank also brings a string helper with these wooden trumpets, which is also nice. You can just start to see the extent of the pipework here. We've got a complement pipes imagine an umpa they're playing the pa uh, the um comes from a flu bass most of the time those pipes are right underneath i'll see if i can get the camera through there in a minute the trombones are actually on their own notes anyway bass drum with a cymbal as you can see there this is just basically a larger pneumatic motor that isn't unlike the action that's got the wind to that stage it's just amplified it up and up and up through the relays to the stage where we've got air in there 
and the little signal pipe comes in and cuts the air supply off and the spring allows the beater to hit the drum and magic happens. I'm going to show you the front, I'll have to open up, so really lightweight power pack here. There we go. So let's have a look. Fairly obvious feature, uh, certainly to anyone watching from the front, is the glockenspiel, which will play effectively with that hammer over travelling. So if I move it slowly, you won't hit the note, but if I twang it like that, let it claps under its own weight and, and over travel, it hits the bar. These bars are just loose on there, that helps them reverberate. Uh, these are clarinet pipes. Part of the clarinet mixture, we've got a stop flute and we've got these cello pipes at the back. The violin section, three ranks together here. Remember that chest at the back with the uh, two ranks of a different scale. Half the violins over here and the other half here. This is the core anglais pipe, very unusual. A conical shape there with a reed at the bottom. There's quite a lot of reeds in this organ. It's full of them. The flue pipe will make a uh, fluty sound. The string has a nice rich overtony sound with the frame on the front, which is another gavioli patent actually. A reed will have a really rich reedy sound like a clarinet. Two notes for the snare drum. So these two notes here. One at the back, one over there. Um, you can see these tuning slides, so when you're tuning the organ, you slide these in order to turn certain ranks off. So you can only tune one pipe at once and then build up uh, from there. Once you've laid the scale on the, on the fundamental, you, you just add to it. Wonderful figures this organ has. This chap turns his head and conducts his stick. And we've got these lovely bell ringers, which are fairly self-explanatory. Uh, I wonder what I did with that tape. There we go. Oh, what was measuring? Anyway, Revet SGDG, uh, sans garantie du gouvernement, that stands for. It's basically the French patent Gaviolian company in France and worldwide. You'll notice a lovely patina to this. It's all original, uh, except there would have actually been an extra set of side cases between this one and here. You'll notice they don't quite match up there. They were lost in 1919 when this organ was effectively condensed. These side cases were removed in order for it to fit into a galloper ride uh, where it stayed until 1984. So uh, all part of its working history. However, it would be very nice one day to recreate those, in which case these existing drum cases would go outwards, probably by about 1.2 metres, and a new case would be insert it in and reproduce the carvings and that would fit in and the front would be longer and at that stage I may even consider trying to reproduce a little bit of a pediment on the top. You see it's quite confined in the trailer at the moment. The whole trailer is 12 foot tall which is uh, quite important for getting under bridges so that could be folding and this is the other idea of having it in a dedicated rigid display vehicle as a lorry as opposed to a trailer. I will no doubt hatch a plan in the fullness of time. You'll notice this lovely carving continues down here. It's a very Art Nouveau facade. Don't think there's another one quite like this in any manner. As I said, the date of the organ is 1905 and uh, it really does show through in this really extravagant design. If you are an advocate of Gavioli fairground organs, you'll be aware of the classic, I call it the six column design. Uh, which is uh, very neoclassical and very formal, uh, some would say boring, and this, uh, this certainly isn't that. What I'm going to do without breaking my neck is jump down, this is a long way, utterly magnificent facade, and just think in its 116 year old history how many people have stood and looked up in wonder both the aesthetics of this organ and enjoyed the music of it. It's uh, amazing, really. I'm sure, it must be millions. A lot of people over that work, working history. So there we go. Uh, what have I missed? Probably a lot of music. So yes, I was saying there's lots of different suppliers of uh, music. I've been collecting books for about 20 years. They're called books, these, because uh, I suppose they, they look like a book, a book of music. 
uh, 20 years, knowing I always wanted an 89 key gavioli. Most of the music that came with it was in excellent condition. The previous owners have done a sterling job in keeping it in good fettle and having a nice wide and varied library. Uh, some of the music I'd amassed in that time uh, needed repair, and this is an ongoing job. Here's a, a piece. I've worked out what the beginning should be. The first few pages were missing, so I've managed to splice some card in, and I've not yet cut that. It's here for some test, uh, just to make sure I'm happy. And it obviously broke in the middle. I put a new section in the middle and put a new ending on it as well. So uh, that's the sort of work that goes in. I've got a, a punching machine. It takes ages. But uh, it's just one of those things in life you, you do in an evening to uh, relax after a stressful day at work in order to feel yeah, one's made a little bit of progress uh, and some music. The one element of this organ which isn't original is the case. It had such a hard working life, the case was changed. I would probably going to paint it. These cases are original and you can see this lovely patina. And uh, I'm thinking the same here because it does obviously look like plywood. The rest of the organ is surprisingly original. There's the odd pipe that's possibly been remade, where it might have been lost or damaged over the years, but it's a struggle to see or to find. These saxophone bass helpers are new. They're the only rank I'm aware of that's new in the organ, so that the rest are all original. Let's have a look if we can see some of the flue pipes underneath. There we go. So there's a whole host of pipes under there. There's a set there and another set under here. Really, it was about using any available space. Do anyone familiar with the small hand-turned barrel organs of the 1800s? It's a very similar design where there's effectively a chair produced with flue pipes underneath and then what's called a riser, even though it's falling in this case, effectively the wind chest is, say, here, and there's a series of channels in a, a wooden block that run down to take the air to these pipes underneath. Uh, it's very similar to the smaller instruments, which is unsurprising really, because they just built bigger and bigger and bigger, which was the natural way of development. So I suppose we better give you a tune. We'll turn the electric blower on here. Turn this e-frame motor on here. So that's start to turn. Okay, I've picked this tune because it's 1905, so that fits in perfectly. It is as old as the organ is. This is exactly what one could have heard when the organ came out of the factory, and it sounds just the same today as it did then.
be remiss not to mention that this machine was installed in the James Day Gallopers in 1920, a ride that travelled extensively in the 20s and 30s before being laid up for the outbreak of the Second World War in 1939. However, by 1941 it was back out and playing, despite there being a war on, uh, I'm quite sure it would be playing all the hits of the day and bringing much light relief during those war years. Uh, after the war, it became a static uh, ride, uh, effectively it was still working, but the, the ride was no longer travelling, based in Aberavon in South Wales, and it was there until 1984. So it has had an amazing working life for the Day family. They are an amazing family of showmen still going today, and have been since the 1700s. Uh, really, really amazing family, and to think what they've had and preserved and shown over the years is wonderful. And we release this hydraulic lever here, lets all the oil out the rams, closes the door and puts the organ to bed. So I hope you've enjoyed this performance and behind the scenes look as to how the organ works and what's making that lovely music. So there we go, if you've enjoyed the video and haven't already, please subscribe to my account. I'm going to continue to upload all the wonderful videos I can make of these magnificent machines. And if you've really, really enjoyed the video and want to encourage me further, I'll leave a link below. You can tip me through PayPal. All the funds I get from these videos and from taking my organs out to perform at events, I throw straight back into the maintenance and funding of new music. These are historic artefacts to be enjoyed by everybody and it's a pleasure to share it with you today and it's a pleasure to continue doing that for the future.